Hello, my name is Lady Just. See, when the pot calls the kettle black, it can be very annoying. I'll tell you more about this shortly. This is the truth in politics. Last week, you heard a lot of noise about buses, procurement, leaks, and so on. Truth in Politics has navigated through all the confusion, and we can now bring you, as we always do, the bare facts. And then you can draw your own conclusions. But before I begin, you hear all the talk about Ghana is tough, right? And security this and security that, and so on and so forth. Anyways, I want to show you an image so that you can see where all this is coming from, all the noise. Now, let me read this for you to really understand. Mahama says, if you are in opposition, you must create in the mind of the electorate that there is a crisis even when crisis does not exist. And so you find our opponents continuing to give an impression as if this country is in crisis. Now, this is Mahama speaking. So, so I tell you, okay, no. mm -hmm. But let's hear what the public really thinks about the direction of the country. It takes time to build things. So with time, everything will be perfect. But we Ghanaians rush too much. We want everything to be so perfect at once. We should take our time. Ghanaians should raise into the fact that they shouldn't put all the blame on the car, uh, current um, government. But rather, they should also look back to realize that the previous government also left difficulties and challenges which the current government is to pay uh, much attention to and control those kind of sectors. He is now clearing up the mess and trying to also implement his policies. But we Ghanaians are not seeing that. We don't recognize the mess NDC created before MPP came into power. Yes, we are, always, we are only complaining about Ghana is hard, Ghana is hard, Nanado is not doing anything. But no, he's trying to clean up the mess that was done previously for him to implement new things and let Ghana be a better country. Former President Mahama said, we have a, a short memory, though when he said that I was, I disagree with him, but by as a stand now, we, I think he has been vindicated. Okay, from my perspective, I think this country is moving from grass to grace because under this jurisdiction of Akufuado, Things are going on better. He has helped our brothers and sisters at the rural areas, the deserted areas, where they are not able to get access to good and better education, getting the chance to enjoy SHS without paying anything. Nursing training allowance, NAPCO, all this money, which should have been in the uh, packet of the government, has now rather reflected in the packet of the citizen such as free SHS, money that individuals who used to pay their was school fees have now been reserved for a, another purpose. The government releasing 30 million Ghana CD for entrepreneurship work and it has never happened in this country before. Until the government has that power then we will start acknowledge that oh, this government was doing fantastic in the case of President Kufu when he has it before we start praising him. So. That one day, we shouldn't expect the Ghanaians to praise this government, but rather, when the government has its power, then we start praising him. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> now that we know the truth in politics, let's get on with other important stuff. Do you remember when Ghana had what we call the culture of silence? It was an era in our history when one couldn't say anything about the government because they would use that, uh, they would use what they called the liberal law to intimidate people and generally curtail free speech. The NDC used this liberal law to throw people in jail just for speaking against the government. Well, because the NPP had nothing at all to hide, Nane Kufuado, the then Attorney General, threw out the law and allowed all Ghanaians the freedom to speak their minds. And guess who took advantage of that freedom 
to insult everyone with whom they didn't agree. Now, that was when the babies with sharp teeth appeared on the scene. History has a funny way of repeating itself. Remember, the NDC has been in power for more than twice the time that MPP has been in power. Yet, because of their corrupt ways, they refuse to pass the right to information law. Certainly, if you are doing crooked things, you don't want anyone to have access to information, do you? So the NDC did not want to hear anything about the right to information law. At every opportunity, they blocked the passage of this right to information law. Well, because the MPP, under the president, Nana Ekufuado, has nothing to hide, they passed the right to information law to allow Ghanaians to have access to information. And now guess who is quick to abuse that right yet again? <laughs> yeah, you guessed right. The NDC. The only problem is that because they lie for a living, they are also good at twisting things around, twisting information into a propaganda advantage. Remember when the Minister of Information, Baba Jamal, told the staff at Information Service that when the government donates a sheep, they should report it as a cow. Yes, a whole cow. Here's the actual quote. Now he says, yours is to make the government look good, whatever the circumstance. If the government buys a sheep and gives it as a gift, you are free to say it is a cow. You are free to say that. If the color of the sheep is black, you can say it was a white colorful cow. There's no difference here at all. There's this small fry called Kevin Taylor who has been getting away with lies and check for far too long. When we're young, you remember we called such people Kofasa. Anyway, basically when Kevin Taylor tells you to look up, if you want to save your eyesight, you need to look down. But today his lies have caught up with him. Watch this video. When you go on the website of Daewoo, Daewoo, yes, which you can see here, every single bus they sell has its own price. Now, the buses we are talking about here, when you go on the website of Daewoo, it's $75,000. What did he say? Daewoo website, right? Now, look at this. Look at the top of this webpage. Do you see Alibaba's website? It is exactly the same website. Now, we would have given Kevin Taylor the benefit of the doubt that his hatred for MPP has blinded him so he didn't see properly. But then here is where he exposes himself as nothing but a cheap con man who has an agenda. Now, the buses we are talking about here, when you go on the website of Daewoo, it's $75,000. I am not making this up. You see, the website is there. The contact is there. The numbers are there. The emails are there. You can go and ask. I am not forcing people. I am not pushing information which is not right. This is the website of Daewoo. And on the website of Daewoo, it states that the buses Ghana is buying. Look at where he switches the Alibaba website to the actual Daewoo website to show the contact. You see, the website is there. The contact is there. The numbers are there. The emails are there. This is because the Dewu website does not have any price on it. So he takes the price from Alibaba's website, covers the part of the page where one can see clearly that it is Alibaba's website, but then announces it as Dewu's website. This is a clear attempt to lie and deceive Ghanaians. And in legal terms, this is what they call willful. To the rest of us, we call it intentional. Kevin Taylor should be thankful that he was not under oath or else he's the one who would be going to jail already. In fact, here's a quote from Dewey. There is another model such as GL6127. The price range is $75,000 to $135,000 on Alibaba. It really shows there will be differences by specification and price with, of course, options, the statement noted. Their statement further read, We, Zao Dewu, 
HQ state categorically that we sold the models GL6127HK and GDW6121HK to our distributor GH Dewu Motors Limited in Ghana at US $175,000 per unit. This is what they say. It's from the horse's own mouth. So now I have a question for you, the viewer. What do Mahama, Baba Jamal, and Kevin Taylor all have in common? Simple. You cannot trust anything that comes out of their mouths. No way. So here's a slide that catches details of the bus procurement that the NDC is lying about. You see, the profit shows zero because Daewoo Ghana Limited works on commissions of vehicles sold and not on margins on prices quoted. So now let's look at some previous purchases. We have information from bus purchases from 2015 by the NDC. Take a look at this slide. It's called the Macapolo Ideal Bus. You see that on this highly reputable website where Brazilian buses are sold, this is a 2017 model which should have actually cost more than the 2015 model that they purchased back in 2015. A brand new 2017 version of it is priced at 345 Brazilian real, which converts to $82,800. Now look at the next slide. They sold 10 of those buses to Ghana under the Mahama administration for $183,000 and they made over $1 million profit just on 10 buses. That is a whopping 100,000 profit on each bus. Now here's another purchase under the NDC government. <laughs> just check it again. You, you see the bus on the slide. The 280,000 Brazilian real is actually equal to only $67,200. Yet, Look at how much they sold it to Ghana for. Hmm. $293,574,000 for a profit per bus of $226,374. So on 20 buses, the NDC administration made a profit of over $4.5 million. Hey! Hmm. And he here's another one. You check this out. This bus that you see here is called the Marco Polo Paradiso. In 2019, 59 of them were sold in Nigeria for $276,625. That is this year, this very year. Guess how much the same bus was sold to Ghana in 2016 during the NDC time under Mahama? They sold 20 of these same buses to us in Ghana for $311,278. Let me put this in context. In 2016, when the prices should have been lower, the Mahama administration purchased the buses for $35,000 more than Nigeria paid for them just this particular year. Remember that the prices of $276,625 sold in Nigeria already includes a markup. So on these 20 buses alone, the Mahama administration again using sole sourcing or just one company instead of the legally mandated competitive tender process pocketed an estimated $2 million in profits just on 20 buses. Okay, so check this one out. This will blow your mind. On this one, for 245 buses, each one cost $106,300. That's from the company. And so look at how much they sold it to Ghana for. $251,600. And so th just check the difference out. The profit difference is $145,300. So for the 245 buses, they made a whopping 
$598,500. This one deserves an award. So I really want you to notice one big difference between when the NDC wants to purchase things versus when the MPP does the same. The MPP makes sure that multiple companies submit bids so that they can select the best price and save Ghana money, as you saw in the bus purchase of 2017. NDC, on the other hand, excludes other companies and allows only one, Bakupeo Ekome, one company to make the purchases. It's called sole sourcing. So when the NDC makes so much noise about the bus purchases, <laughs> now you know the truth in politics. I mean... They don't have a point. What are they complaining about? Seriously. Anyway, but it all makes sense. As you can tell from <laughs> this quote that we just showed you earlier, Mahama and his NDC corrupt officials will say and do anything to create the impression that we have crisis in Ghana. Chese Ghana, Beja Demu, but when you look at the facts where MPP engages multiple companies to ensure that they get value for money for Ghana, the Mahama administration and its officials are rather the ones inflating prices and using only one company to procure buses for Ghana and walking all the way to the bank with a loot. So now you have the facts. Don't allow the NDC to confuse you because when it comes to the bus purchases, it is a corrupt NDC, which is the pot rather calling MPP the kettle black. My name is Lady Just, and this is Truth in Politics.